So welcome back. We have started talking about numbers and how we think of them in logic. And we saw that we can think of the set of natural numbers by defining one base number of 0 and then defining a successor function which is the next number and the next number and the next number and so on. So once we define that, we have the set of natural numbers. So we are saying consider an infin infinite domain consists of one constant who we call 0 and one function, successor function of arity 1. What does it do? It takes any element from this domain and gives us another element from this domain which is the next number essentially. So it does this for every number in the domain. So you start with 0, you get 1, you start with 1, you get 2 and so on essentially which is of course the foundation of the first principle of mathematical induction. I had not mentioned this when I was talking about Peano's axioms, but there were more than 8 axioms in, in the uh, as given by Peano and some of them had to do with uh, the principle of uh, first principle of induction, so which is built upon this set well ordered set which says that we start with the smallest element or the base element 0 and then we have a successor function which takes you to the next elements and so on. Now we want to talk about addition, okay. So that is the ba most basic of uh, uh, arithmetic operations. So if you remember when we talked about uh, um, machines made of iron, then Blaise Pascal made this machine called Pascaline which could add two numbers, you know. So that is one of the basic things we want to start with. And of course like in all mathematics when children they learn numbers, they start with addition. So let us also look at that. So the elements of our domain is this infinite set, uh, a 0, s of 0, s of s of 0, s of s of s of 0 and so on. So you can no doubt astutely observe that the number of s's in every element is the count of that number. So 0 has no s's, so it is 0, uh, s of 0 has 1 s, so it is 1 and so on essentially. So we have a representation for numbers which is logical essentially. So the numbers are not just arbitrary names that we have given. We have now defined this set essentially. The first element which is 0, the next element, the next element, the next element. That is very important. We call this domain the domain of natural numbers. The following first of the logic statement define addition of two numbers. Okay. Now, if you were a strict logician, uh, you would say that these statements are not true by themselves, uh, but they apply to this set of natural numbers. So, you, if you could write a function, if you could write a predicate which defined, uh, let us say, n n of x. How could you define n n of x? You could define it by saying 0 is that n n of 0 is true and if n n of x is true then n n of successor of x is also true. So, this is of course for all x if you are using the language of logic. So, this definition would be a, a definition of natural numbers. I could have added, I should have perhaps added it here. And uh, once we have the definition, then we can say this as follows that uh, nn of x implies this and then I would move the quantifier outside. So, the first axiom simply says that if you add 0 to something, then you get that something. Hmm. So, I should have mentioned uh, this also that uh, the way to interpret this plus n m r let us say is 
that n plus m equal to r. So, this predicate of three arguments when you interpret it over the domain stands for this relation where you have n, n plus m equal to r essentially. So, you can imagine you do not have to we of course, do not implement numbers like that or we do not define addition like that, but this basically defines addition. It says that r is the sum of n plus m. So, we could in principle create a table which defines its relation essentially and how would we do that? We would say uh, uh, 0, 0, 0 belongs to let me use the term plus, let us call this relation plus and then 0, 1, 1 belongs to plus and so on and so forth and somewhere down the line you would have 2 or 3 and 6 and 9 belongs to plus. So, addition is a relation on the domain. Of course, we do not explicitly define that relation. Instead, we use these two pieces of logic code if you want to call it or logic statements to define the notion of addition. The notion of addition is defined by this predicate plus which says that the first two are the sums that you add and the third one is the result of adding those sums. So, instead of writing that whole thing explicitly as a table which of course, would never end because uh, it would have infinite elements in it we can do that succinctly in just two lines uh, or four lines if we count the definition of natural numbers. So, the first one says that if you add 0 to anything then you will get that thing back essentially. So, in men, in some sense a lot of the table is described by that where the first element is 0, the second element must be same as the third element essentially. So, when you say this is true, we are saying this is a true statement. Uh, remember that when we talk about logic, we talk about truth values essentially. So, we are saying 0 plus x is x is true for all x and then we are saying that if it is true that x plus y gives you z, then it must be true that the successor of x plus y will give you successor of z. So, if it is true that 2 plus 2 is 4, it will be true that 3 plus 2 is 5. And these two lines of code or four lines of code if you want to say, if your domain is only natural numbers, if your domain is only this set, then you do not really need this statement to say that it is a natural number. But if your domain is more complex and you have natural numbers and other things uh, in the domain, then you have to say that addition is defined over natural numbers in this fashion, where if x is a natural number, then these two axioms hold essentially. So, you can see that you can think of these two statements as sentences in logic. First sentence says for all x 0 plus x equal to x. The second sentence says that for all x y z, if x plus y is equal to z, then x plus 1 plus y will give you z plus 1 because the successor function is plus 1 in natural numbers. We have written here, written it here as s of x essentially. So, remember that this is 0 plus 1. So, plus 1 is a successor function. This is uh, 0 plus 1 plus 1 and so on. So, you can think of S as saying plus 1 essentially. This small knowledge base of two lines. So, just uh, let us assume that everything is only in that dom the only the domain contains consists only of uh, natural numbers. Then these two lines define this whole business of addition. Okay, fine, they define addition. Can we use them to add numbers? The answer is yes. So, we will talk about that next. So, what do we have? We started with this program which defines addition. 
So, like Kowalski said, we have defining a relation between x, y and z and our job is to only tell you what is the relation between x, y and z and that is we are telling you by these two lines of code which says that for all x 0 plus x is 0 x x is true and for all x for all x y z plus x y z is true if plus of successor of x y successor of z is true. So, we are telling you that. So, like Kowalski said we have defined this notion of addition. We have not said how to add the numbers and what logic programming says is that once you have defined this notion you can use this as a program and let us see how that happens. So, since we are working with resolution we will convert these into clause form and you can see that these are this is the clause form for this two sentences and we will look at two queries to understand how we can prove that these statements are true. So, what are the two statements we want to prove to be true? The first statement we want to prove is that 2 plus 5 is equal to 7. If you were to use our standard notation this is how you would write this is 2 because as you can see there are 2 instances of s here this is 5 as you can see there are 5 instances of s here and this is 7 because there are 7 instances of s here. So, that is how we have defined this set. So, we are essentially saying that the third number if you add to the sixth number you will get the eighth number. The third number is 2 right the first number is 0 the second number is 1 the third number is 2 and we want to show that this is true. So, we are sticking to logic now we are just talking about proof essentially. You have given us a knowledge base this is the k b and this is the alpha that we want to show to be true we want to show that k b entails alpha. If we can do that then we know that this is true. What is more interesting is that what if we do not know the sum. So, when you start learning to add you do not always know the sum of simple elements. So, the other one is the existential query that we are interested in. It says is this statement true there exists an x such that plus 2 5 x is true and the meaning of that is is there an x such that 2 plus 5 is equal to x. So, if we can answer this query and also tell you that it is 7 that means we have a program to add numbers right. So, let us see how we prove these two goals this thing. So, as usual we negate the queries and then we will use the resolution method. So, this is what we have uh, what you see in this orange pink like color is the query show that 2 plus 5 is equal to 7 or in other words we have negated it and said that 2 plus 5 is not equal to 7 and our knowledge base entire knowledge base is this all of these two statements here one statement talks about 0 the other statement talks about the successor function. So, there we are uh, you have to look at it a little bit carefully. Uh, what are we doing here we have a remember that in the resolution method if we have not p or q and in the other statement you have not of q prime. then if you can match or unify q prime with q then you can infer p essentially. So, we want to unify this whole goal with the consequent side of the implication statement. Remember the implication sta statement says for all x y z if plus 
x y z is true then plus successor of x y successor of z is true. So, the consequent we are ma mapping with the goal. So, you can see this has the flavor of backward chaining as well. You are taking the goal matching it with the consequent and inferring the antecedent as a sub goal and the antecedent is here. So, you, sh you should just carefully go over this uh, substitution and see that it is indeed correct, but it is uh, at this moment we will note that we started off by saying that 2 plus something and now we have reduced it to 1 plus something. So, we started off by saying that show that 2 plus 5 is equal to 7, now we have reduced it to 1 plus 5 is equal to 6. So, this is 1 as you can see this is 5 and this is 6. So, we have gone from the goal to the sub goal. So, this form of resolution this particular pattern of resolution is like backward chaining. We saw that as an example when we were talking about the Socratic argument that you can that resolution subsumes both forward chaining and backward chaining and in this pattern that we are constructing it is more like backward chaining. So, we have got a sub goal that which is show that 1 plus 5 is 6. We again use the same goal, the same rule and now with a different substitution here and now we are saying that show that 0 plus 5 is equal to 5. How do we show that? We have a another axiom in our system which will allow us to show that and we have derived the null clause. So, you can see that we pose the query that is it true that 2 plus 5 is equal to 7. The theorem prover came back and said yes, it is true and it gave us a proof for that. If I had written the numbers directly, then you can see that uh, this is what we are doing essentially. Those, those two clauses remain the same, but we start with the goal of showing 2 plus 5 is equal to 7, reduce it to a goal of 1 plus 5 is equal to 6. So, it is like backward chaining, we are going from goal to sub goal. Of course, we are using the resolution method, but it we are using that pattern in the resolution method which mimics the backward chaining process. I am repeating this because prologue is essentially a back, backward chaining language and that is what we are going to do. And again we chain to another sub goal which shows that show that 0 plus 5 is equal to 5 and that gets resolved because it is directly there in the knowledge base. So, let us take a break here and uh, we will address the second query after the break in the next video. The second query if you remember is about an existential query. Is there something such that something is true essentially? So, we will do that in the next one.